music is a great communicator. Of, it is. You, you can put a million people in a room that don't even speak the same languages and you start playing some music and pretty soon you got everybody, you know, just getting it to it. I mean, it's such a universal language, you know. Just great to watch and see people in that. You know, I was online. I was looking at this uh, box set, and um, I think it was on Alice's site. And there was a cake that was made, and it had your artwork on the cake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is really amazing. Yeah, uh, well, you know, they made shirts. I, uh, they just took stuff that we did. I mean, it's it's really funny because in one way, uh, yeah, I feel kind of left out. Because oh. they've taken what we've created and used it. Yeah. But I understand as part of the Alive family for now, what, uh, since 1971, uh, I understand how they work. And I understand that nothing is done intentionally to hurt anybody, either me to them or them to me. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just. A, a, a mutual respect is the best way I could put it. You know, when we did this box set, and this is a great segue into the box set because it was really in a way, you know, and I had this conversation with both Alice and Bob Ezra. I think that the reason that they reached out to me for this box set was obviously I did the first one and it was their way of, letting people know you know craig braun is still around if he did it you know he they would have gone to him you know but every every cover after school's out for you know a lot of them they came to me and to pacific guy in here so in a way coming back to me with this project which is hey this is like the first one you did and you got sort of cheated out of it so we're going to give you because we love you and we respect you and the value that you brought to our brand. We're going to, we want you to do this. And that's kind of how that, that's how this whole box set started. I, I, I had never really done a box set for anybody. I knew what they were and they were elaborate, you know, and it, and so because, you know, they, they wanted it to be like the school's out package. So who better to reach out to than me? Because I worked with them. I told, we talked about this where they actually came to me uh, behind the scenes once we had started Pacific Ioneer and no longer part of the other company. The original comp that I created was, um, it was liberated. Let's put it that way. And they did, Tom Wilkes, great designer, incredible credits, uh, couldn't figure out how to make it work. And Chef, asked if I would be willing to work with him behind the scenes to do, you know, to help them through it. And obviously I did. And we became great friends. And to this day, we're friends. And the fact that you're a few years back, actually it's been a few years now with this, uh, since 2011, I think it was, uh, that they came back to me. But then they came back to me after this with school, uh, Welcome Nightmare, Nightmare 2. You know, so I'm kind of like, a, an important tool in the toolbox in the live Alice Cooper persona. I am a valued, a valued tool in that toolbox. That's how I could best. It goes beyond that too. It's a personal thing. And you've heard some of the quotes that I ever put in the gold mine magazine about oh, yeah. them saying, if there was no Ernie Shuffler or Pacific Ioneer, there would be no Alice Cooper. I mean, and that's from Bob Ezrin to Chef Borden to Alice himself. So you know, I feel very honored to be just part of it. You know, not every part of your family spends 24 hours a day with you, 365 days a year. It makes it more special when you see them. And that's the feeling I get every time they reach out to me and want either me to do something with them or do something for them. Okay. They, a couple of years ago, they, Shep reached out and said, hey, you know, we need to get a good image of the billion dollar baby's front cover coin because they want to use it. Alice wants to use it in this stuff that he was doing. Uh, I think he was doing some, uh, some, some uh, charity concerts or something. Anyway, he, he, they wanted that big coin and sure. No problem. Chef, no problem at all. Whatever you need, you get, and guess what? You know, you don't pay for it. One of the things that happened to us during this box set 
was one of my assignments was to uh, reach out to every illustrator. I'm sorry, every photographer who had any photography that they had taken of Alice since the beginning. Okay, and there, God, I don't know, there are probably 10 photographers, 10 important ones, Neil Preston and, 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 and a lot of these guys that shot um, him for us, you know, as Pacific Guy in here, but also for Alice, you know, and alive, because there were a lot of PR shots taken and all that stuff, and they wanted me to reach out to these guys and see how much of this photography I could gather up to put into this box set. And, you know, they had the idea of the school's out thing. And so we talked about, well, let's make it a real desk. And I don't know whether you've seen the box set. I, I saw it on eBay yesterday. Somebody wanted a $990 for one. And it was like 148 or something. I have one that's totally perfectly sealed up. It's like number 48. You know, I'll never, I'll never part with it. It's something that goes into wherever all this artwork ends up going, whether it's a museum or privately owned, you know, there's a lot of content. And, and we're going to talk about that in future shows because I'm, I'm talking about making it more available to public, to people who are fans that want to buy an original piece of artwork. And not every piece is 150000 I don't mean to drift off here. but So when, when they reached out to me, uh, these photographers, every one of them wanted money. You know, what's in it for me? What's, you know, what do I get out of it? And basically, I had to just tell a lot of them. Some of them gave it up because they know that it's, it, they're, they're going to get a credit, okay? Uh, they're now selling these images to different Getty and selling them to, you know, different magazines and newspapers that reach out to them that want these pictures. Um, and they make a good income on that. But <clears throat> this is some something that they were paid for in the beginning. And really help them become who they are today. Because Alice, let's face it, when we were doing all this stuff, Alice was like right there in the top three or four in the record business in rock and roll. Alice Cooper was a huge band, a huge band. And, you know, uh, just incredible guys, and just an incredible talented group. And all these, and nobody was like them. You know, except Arthur Brown. Arthur Arthur Brown was uh, he was, oh, he uh, was crazy. Yeah. He you used know, to wear a fiery helmet yeah, on, on his, the top head. Of his head. Yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing there is, if you look at his eye makeup, it's kind of like Alice. Yes. And it was way before. But you know, again, we're all influenced by you know everything around us. This box set is a perfect example. What you see there on on this side is the original cover that. You know, I had designed and Tom Wilkes had executed because I left the company. And then what you see behind me here, and I'm going to send you these images. Thank you. It's going to be great. Uh, because the last show, you did a great job doing that. Uh, what you see here is the, the working title of the album was School Days. Okay, D-A-Z-E. And in the middle, you see the apple with the bite out of it and the snake wrapped around it. And then... You know, when I showed that to Alice, he was in a rec uh, in a recording studio in Glendale, and I went over there and I showed him the sketch, and he said, "You know, I really like it, but we changed the title of the album." <laughs> and like, you know, and we've talked about it this happens. about this. It happens. <laughs> just an airplane, Aerosmith. It goes. The list goes on about doing that. You know, air, you know, just crazy. But anyway, he said. We changed the name of the album to Old School because that's what we are. We're old school. And he said, I love the image, but we need to make it somehow old school. So we talked about it. I said, well, what if we made half the apple rotten? You know, and all Adrian, and yeah, perfect. That's it. So I love you, it. Yeah. So when you look at the logo, and you know, <laughs> it's big on the desk here, and I'll send you a big image of just the logo. It's that. Part of it's in the in the 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 juice is dripping out of the bottom of this rotten side of the apple. Oh, is and, that so? Him? <laughs> yeah, it, it, is. it is. It is absolutely. I mean, and that's kind of how sometimes how it happens, Joyce. We talked about mm -hmm. this before. Where where do the ideas come from? They come from everything around us, and a lot of it came from the client in the corporate world uh, in conversation we have. A lot of it. A lot of it happened. In, in the music business with the acts because we weren't really dealing with record companies. We were dealing with the acts themselves. And when you're there in the studio or you're there in a apartment, in a condo or whatever with them, 
and the ideas are flying around and things are exchanged and somebody will say something stupid maybe and all of a sudden that's it. You know, school days seem to be the perfect uh, title, but, you know, old school was exactly what they were. And unless these first two steps weren't taken, you know, we wouldn't have got to the image that's on the on the other side of it. So to me, that was really kind of amazing. And, and, and so you see that on this side now, you see the actual box. And when you open it up, you'll see there, there was a total of 25 individual pieces that we designed for this package. The package, this was definitely the longest album package that I had ever worked on to create. And, and mainly, I guess, obviously, because it was a box set. But some of the stuff that we did for Alice with the big wallet or the, you know, the cardboard box, those things weren't easy to do. The, the, the you know, Doors album with the Zoetrope, I mean, that was probably the most complicated, where everything had to be perfect so that when you popped it out, it all made that Zoetrope. And so the tolerances, you know, we talked about it had to be on board, and it, and it had to be done I mean, nobody had ever really done that, you know? So, and, and this was kind of the same way because now it's a real box. It's it's not a, a flat album that the top lifts up and there's things inserted inside. This is an actual box with hinges and a hinge on the top and the front and, you know, and, and all these pieces inside. And, and just, you know, there were four CDs, a DVD, with two hours worth of video, seven inch vinyl, 60 page yearbook. Cause I came up with this idea of doing a yearbook because, you know, there are four, you know, four uh, stages in their career. There are four stages in high school. So you got your freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, or junior, yeah, junior, senior. So those four years, we came up with an idea of doing this, yearbook and breaking it into four sections just like a you know when you get your yearbook you got the freshman class and then there's the sophomore and then there's the junior and then there's the senior so and their career was much like that we were able to break it up like that so what you see there is the logo on the front of the of the yearbook oh that and, is great yeah and you see part of the yearbook down here in the bottom uh right there that photograph you see that the yearbook kind of and, and again, I have, I had to scrounge together shots to put this thing together, but it was important. And I didn't want to open up the one I have because, you know, it, it becomes, well, it becomes worth more, but it's more meaningful if it's sealed up and not open. Some people buy these things and will buy two and three of them and one to open up and have the other one to put away. And then you got to back up in case something happens to that one. Real cool. I mean, I, there you see them on Facebook, you know, with with this uh, gold mine thing. I mean, they're they're selling them like crazy because people are buying two and three of them. I bought four myself. You know, <laughs> it was like, OK, this is great. I'm going to buy them and put them away. So so basically what we have here is some of the in there. So there's the yearbook. And then over here you have some different images of posters and and. DVD uh, covers and, you know, vinyl things and the book and, and all the stuff that goes in it. And one of the things that I did, you'll see the over here, the first one is the uh, Alice at the Palace poster. And then the next one over here is the ad that was for the Alice at the Palace. Alice at the Palace was going to be a Broadway production, off Broadway at the Palace Theater. And it was going to, but what happened was as the deal was getting finalized, the people that owned the Palace Theater found out who Alice Cooper really was. They thought that he was a debutante. And it oh, was no. Be this, no, that's it's it's a very, very well documented story. So oh, Chef wow. had us create this poster and I and I actually designed and had a guy build two headsets that Alice would wear with the snakes moving and the eyes lighting up, the Medusa, which was supposed to be time magazine cover but ended up being on the billion dollar baby bill but and on shirts and stuff but i had actually made for the stage show these i didn't make it myself i had a guy named joey cavanaugh that made it, all these incredible things and it was all wired and the, the, the heads would move and the eyes would light up and it was amazing and all that never got used because the people who had the palace theater 
found out who Alice was and backed out of the deal. Well, shoot, uh, ship, um, ship, 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 um, Actually, I think they sued them and won and ended, ended up becoming the Billion Dollar Babies Tour. So they took it on the road instead of trying to do it on, um, on broad, off Broadway. Um, and so all that stuff was, you know, that, like I said, that's a, a poster that was, it was two guys painting a billboard in Times Square because the Palace Theater was right there in Times Square. And so these sign painters, and we took the big billboard and it was this sequence of, and you can't see it, but I'll send it to you. Like I said, it's sign painters who are painting a sign. And at a certain point, they back away and it's the Medusa head and it turns them into stone. You know, oh, I mean, so it's, you know, it's so yes, Alice. Yes, it is the, him. The, the, you know, the, the cliffhanger and the dangler and then you're, you're, you're done with it. So, you know, that was really a pretty cool thing. And I what I'm going to do now is, like, unlike any other shows, I'm going to put up because there's so many different aspects to this package that I need to bring up more than one image for a background. And again, I'm going to be sending all of these to you. Thank you. Um, I was amazed what was involved. Uh, were there gold, like, were there tickets involved in that box set? Oh, yeah. Right? And I'm going to, we're going to show those right I now. I thought I saw those online. Uh, yeah, we're going to, we're going to talk about that right now. So there you see, um, there's some of the pieces that are inside. The tickets uh, are actually the tickets were in the, the backdrop before this one. Yeah, they were where the two posters. What happened was yes. I, I gave them five different images to use as free posters that came inside the box set. So what you saw there with the Alice at the Palace and that other the billboard teaser uh, were actual prints that were inside the box when you got them. So you, that was part of all the stuff that you got. There was a total of, like I said, 25 different pieces that we created for this package. And if, you know, when, when you go back and I send you these images, you'll see at the bottom of those two shots are the tickets that we reproduced. That was all part of it. Yeah. And then, you know, we would have weekly meetings. We, this went on for three months. I, we would have weekly meetings with myself. Sometimes Alice would be in, in, in on it. Uh, definitely Bob Pfeiffer, you know, uh, 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 Chef Gordon, uh, and, and uh, uh, Bob Ezrin, and, you know, Toby, his road manager, and myself, and Bob Ingleseepen. And we would have these weekly updates because they, we'd need to know, are we got, have we got photography? What are we still lacking? And there's, there's so many different pieces to this box set. And I would spend at least two days a week, sometimes three, in Carpinteria, which is the uh, city right before Santa Barbara as you're going uh, west um, on, the, on, the Pacific, on the Pacific Coast Highway. Um, and that's where Bob lived. And I would spend the night and we would work on this stuff because he had the computer that we were doing it all on. I had like a little joke thing, you know. Uh, and so I would be there present. And what you see here is some of the different graphics that we created for the different covers, the CDs, the labels. There were half a dozen of those. And, and then some of the sketches that I did. I did all these sketches that were submitted and we decided whether we would use them or not, what you see over there. And, and you know, like this the school behind me here. I was know, looking uh, at the school. That was one that really caught my eye. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so there was, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it was a 60-page book, you know, so it was not, uh, uh, it was a huge feat to create along with all the other stuff that was going into this. You know, I mean, it was, it was, it would be different if it was just the actual um, book, but it was all these other things. And then, they actually used the, the graphics on the, I guess the DVD or the C, the, the DVD video on the video box. They used the graphics and stuff. And I, I didn't really have space. I didn't even have space for Ernie's corner image there because and there were just so many images that I wanted to show. I mean, these sketches that you see behind me, I mean, this one of Alice in the sheets. I mean, if you look close at it, there's arms that are coming out of the folds of the sheets that are going toward his face, you know, and it's freaking him out. I mean, I, I probably have, I don't know, 50 different images like these that were created and submitted to the committee. And, you know, did they work? Did they not? And, 
you know, or what if we did this? And so I'd go away and do a little sketch. And and it, it was good for me to do the sketches because they had to look like somebody that was just doodling on a piece of paper while class was going on or etching it in the cover uh, or of the top of their desk or something. So, you know, it, I didn't have to be, it didn't have to be a Drew St- a Struzan or a Bill Garland, that's for sure. So, you know, in, in, in a way, I, it was the perfect thing for me to do. And, and like I said, it was a, it was a real, inter- it was a real exciting project that was something that, you know, I had never done before. And there were also five golden tickets that went in. Like, it was like Willy Wonka. You know, we were <laughs> talking about it. What I was thinking it. about was, well, you, you and I are on the same wavelength. Yeah, well, that's, 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 yeah, but, you know, you could have been there in the meeting. I have to look around, make sure you weren't right there when all this was going on. <laughs> this because, is a you know, well, in these conversations with everybody, and, and we've talked about this in the past, the best, the best ideas come from good submitted ideas that are open, whether it's a crappy idea or not, there's no bad ideas. And then it get, once you get it, you get the ideas and you keep refining them and refining them and moving them from good, from, from mediocre to good and then to great. That's the, that's the, the challenge on each one of these things. And I think, you know, sometimes having a lot of people in it, is the wrong way to go. Mm-hmm. And, and that happens a lot. You know, it happened a lot in, in uh, it happened more in corporate America where you have marketing people, salespeople, you know, brand managers, all that stuff that are each one is vying to be able to say, see that little thing right there? I did that. That was my idea right there. Okay. And that's, you get a lot of that in corporate America. You, you get so much of it in, in the music world because again, we talked about it. The crazier we were, the more they loved it. You know, so when and I forget who it was that came out with the idea of the golden ticket. I think it was actually Alice said, you know, because he's a big Willy Wonka fan. So was I. And it was like, yeah, as soon as he said golden ticket, everybody went, yes, that's exactly what we should do. And and I don't know how many I think they did 500 or whatever it was of these box sets. They sold out like within within three or four days, they were all sold out. Because, and I know because I had a meeting with the president of Atlantic Records who was interested in buying some original artwork, but he wanted it for nothing because it was just an album cover. Anyway, when I was there at the meeting with him at the Four Seasons Hotel, I had brought the box set that we'd just done. And he was like, oh, man, I got it. Would you sell it to me? I said, no. I mean, this is my, you know, so he immediately went online and bought it. And he said, you know, there weren't that many left or whatever it was. And then within a day or so, they were gone. So that's why they're like a thousand dollars on eBay. You know? I and can Alice believe is, it. Yeah, and Alice is still, you know, current. He's still, you know, he, and and I think part of what keeps him that way is because he's constantly generating new talent. He's not afraid to bring young people on that are going to maybe take his place. You know, I mean, some people, from an ego standpoint, get to that kind of a space. You know, Alice isn't really like that. So, you know, doing the five, the five golden tickets, and then they arranged to have a, uh, a, a VP concert and a meet and greet with Alice, you know, getting the golden ticket. And I think there were only five, you know. And so, I mean, it just made it more, again, it was for us, it was for me, it was perfect because it's a way of getting people more involved, you know. And, you know, yeah, there will be some people that will just buy it because it is what it is, but there'll be people that want to buy more than one because they get a better chance of getting the golden ticket. You know, I mean, it's kind of crazy how people are like that, but, you know. Uh, God bless God. those hardcore fans. I love them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and he still has them. He still has them, and, and he's developing new ones, you know, which is a real, um, it's a real challenge for anybody, whether you're in music or acting or art or anything you know it, it it becomes you become older you become obsolete possibly you know that's why that resonated that i want to continue making history instead of becoming it it's so meaningful for me when i thought about it because you know and we've talked about this it's easy to become history you can live on history you can live on doing one thing 
and and you live your whole life on that. In the, in the music business, it's called One Hit Wonders, which was oh, your we show, talked about your that. show last week. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and all the different groups had different histories. It, it's amazing yeah. how that how that know, comes about. Unbelievable songs that just moved me. I, the whole show was great. It was really great. And, and but some of the memories that come back, you know, when you hear that music. I mean, I'm a child of the '50s. You know, I, I I discovered music, you know, when I was in like the fifth or sixth grade, and you know that was like right after the last dinosaur fell into the pool and became oil. That's when I was around. So me and Keith Richards, you know, he was riding that dinosaur, <laughs> jumped off before it hit the oil. But uh, you know, I mean, it, it brings back such memories and and how mu- music has evolved. Music's changed. You know, some people say there's no good music today. You know, I mean, I think that, you know, that's valid if you just look at one genre of music. You know, I mean, there's always change and change is always hard to come by. But it never fails. It never fails to happen. You know, no matter what industry you're in, change, whether it's youth or experience or, or, or just the world itself changing, it, it's always there and, and it's always evolving. And there's always going to be ones that, you know, sit down and rest while the race is going on and, and never get back in the race. And then there's ones that just don't bother sitting back and just keep going. It's race. If you get one shot at it, you know, and it's not how you run it, it's where you finish, you know, and, and we've talked about that too. And I, again, I'm, I'm really so blessed, you know, to be able to have met you, to meet all the great friends that we have on the block, you know, learn a lot from your show, Joyce. I mean, it really is great. And I mean, I tell you that all the time, but it's true. You know, every time I listen to your show, you know, I don't listen just to listen to Ernie's Corner. Okay. <laughs> Although, you know, I got to be honest. you do a good job on there. <laughs> yeah, I, I would vote for myself. I'm I not, would vote I'm for you, too. I'm not going to lie about that. You know, let me go to the last image here while we're finishing up here. I got one more image. And again, I'm going to. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Hold on. Well, I think about like in a Gene Wilder's portrayal of Willy Wonka, and I think about Alice, that it was just this uh, uh, crazy imagination. And Alice has brought that forth in his performances. Oh, yeah. He's, you know, he has, he is, he brought theater to music. I mean, to me, he is very much like, um, here, let me put this last one on. Is there, there's the whole set. Oh, that's really nice. That's that's yeah. very nice. I wish I had a higher resolution of it, but you know, oh. as long as you don't, as long as you don't show it too big, you know, it'll be all right. <laughs> it, it, it it captures what what, yeah, it, what the, the project thing. was about. Yeah, but you know, I mean, it, it's it, it's really um, an amazing time, you know, that we're having now, and 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 music has always been such an important part of my life, and meeting you, learning. Uh, from you learning from other people on Facebook. I mean, Facebook is a great communicator if it's used correctly. You know, I mean, unfortunately, there are some people that want to use it the wrong way, you know, and, and, and there's, you know, but that's just human nature. I mean, you're always going to have, you know, I always say, you know, there's uh oh, well, I can't say it on, on this. <laughs> it's, it's, life is like drinking from a huge punch bowl. Okay. And you've had three or four glasses of punch and all the garnish floating on the orange slices and the gardenias and everything. And you've had three or four cups and it's really good. And you sort of move some garni around to take another cup and there's a big piece of poop. <laughs> I knew that in, was coming. I in the bunch bowl. I'm sorry. I hope we don't get, they don't have to edit that out, but you know, Mr. Pooh is actually somebody very famous from the Christmas time in South Park, but, you find that in there. And and life is like that. You're never going to have a perfect punch bowl. You know, there's always going to be something. And the, and the idea, I guess, is to just check, move the garni around before you commit to taking a glass. And that's life, isn't it? It's I mean, very true. Yeah. You know, you got to move it around. And I mean, and it's so funny because in just the last couple of weeks, I've had people approach me for different projects. And, you know, it was just... If I was younger and stupider and didn't have as many scars on my back from it, I might have fallen for it again, but I didn't, you know, and I'm 
glad that I didn't. I don't have to have every project. I don't have to get everything. All I have to do is get ones that make me happy and ones that I feel good about. And as you get older, and I'm sure you can relate to this, they start saying things to you like, oh, man, this is going to be so much fun, and you're going to have so much fun doing it. And you know, <laughs> you know that yes. there's only going to be one person that's having fun in this relationship, and it's them, not yep. you. You were right. You were very, very right. So, you know, just in a, a, another little offshoot here of this box set, working with Alive and working with Shep. Shep, yeah, I think it was in his book, too, he said it. The three most important things that he learned in the music business was always ask for the money. Number two, never forget to ask for the money. And number three, always remember to never forget to ask for the money. And that's what it's all about, you know. And Shep has made an incredible career. He is probably one of the most. He is, and I, you know, he is the P.T. Barnum of our generation and a P.T. Barnum of the music business, bringing Alice into this environment that he was totally pushed back. I mean, we talked about this, how Alice had signed as Shep as the manager to Frank Zappa's Bazaar label. And the record company was really pushing back. They didn't want to have that act become successful because they were skimming money away from bizarre records because they knew Frank Zappa would never have a big hit. Yeah. He was a, it was a niche. He had a niche following like the Grateful Dead. I mean, the Grateful Dead is huge, but they never achieved and they never wanted to. They never achieved a record sales or whatever it is, or maybe they have, but they just didn't become famous, famous. They had a cult following, a huge cult following. I mean, hundreds of thousands of people would show up just to, to hear them. And I was a great dead head as well. But, and I guess it was because they never sold out. They always went for the purity of the music. And unlike other acts, even the Rolling Stones, who, you know, you watch an Applebee's commercial and it's, you know, start, start me up, you know, <laughs> so it's like, but, you know, I, I, you know, one of the things that, you know, uh, I learned was, you know, to always ask for the money. And when they start shying away and telling you how much fun it's going to be, you just have to pass on it. You know? and I so, fully you know, agree. It's good but advice. The, but, the one, but the one thing we need to talk about. I song. know. Music. Song. Yes. Song. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, my God, there's so many songs. If this is a hard one, Ernie. <laughs> in the box. And, you know, again, sometimes I get accused by Burton that I always go for the low-hanging fruit. But there are songs, again, who that really touch me. And, again, a lot of it's about the singer. And, you know, a lot of people debated whether Alice could sing or not. You know, I think that one of the best examples of his singing back then and even up to today was Only Women Bleed. Oh, it's, it's a great such, song. Such it, an incredible song. Yes, it is. And it hit the end. I mean, they had no idea <laughs> that that was coming. You know, I mean, and, you know, it was it was like when Bob Dylan was accused of not being able to sing, and he did Nashville Skyline with Lay, Lady, Lay, and all those incredible songs from that album. Every song on that album is amazing. But there was this big debate about how Bob Dylan couldn't sing. He just there, you know, rapping and talking. And he sure proved them wrong. And I think with Only Women Bleed, there were, he, a lot of these people that didn't believe that he could are now believers. And then this, the, so I'm going to just throw three out there. Pick the one you want. Go for it. Go want. for it. Okay. Well, the second one would be Teenage Lament. That's fabulous. You know, which is another great song, you know. What and am then I going to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, and then the third one would be Under My Wheels. which would Oh, be, good stuff. You know, good stuff. Yeah, you know, oh, I mean, and, and I stayed away from um, School's Out and I'm 18. You know, those are those are too vain. Those are kind of rotten fruit at the bottom, as Burton would say. That's falling on the ground. 